Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the pancreas. To begin with, the pancreas is a gland that is partly exocrine and partly endocrine. The exocrine part secretes digestive pancreatic juice, while the endocrine part secretes hormone, example insulin. It is a soft, lobulated and elongated organ. Looking at the location of the pancreas, the pancreas lies more or less transversely along the posterior abdominal wall at the level of the first and the second lumbar vertebrae. Now looking at the size and shape of the pancreas, the pancreas is J-shaped or retort shaped and set obliquely. It is about 15 to 20 centimeters long, 2.5 to 3.8 centimeter broad and 1.2 to 1.8 centimeter thick. It weighs about 90 grams. The pancreas is divided from right to left into the head, the neck, body and tail of pancreas. The head is enlarged and lies within the concavity of the duodenum. The tail right here reaches the hilum of the spleen. Now concising the important points under the introduction to the pancreas, the pancreas is a gland that is partly exocrine and partly endocrine. The exocrine part secretes the digestive pancreatic juice. The endocrine part secretes hormones, example insulin. It is a soft, lobulated and elongated organ. Looking at the location, the pancreas lies more or less transversely across the posterior abdominal wall at the level of the first and second lumbar vertebrae. Looking at the size and shape, it is J-shaped or retort shaped and is set obliquely. It is about 15 to 20 cm long, 2.5 to 3.8 cm broad and 1.2 to 1.8 cm thick. It weighs about 90 grams. The pancreas is divided from right to left into head, neck, body and tail. The head is enlarged and lies within the concavity of the duodenum while the tail reaches the high limb of the spleen. Moving on to the parts of the pancreas in detail, first let's look at the head of the pancreas. The head is the enlarged, flattened right end of the pancreas, right here, situated within the C-shaped concavity of the duodenum. Looking at its external features, the head has three borders, two surfaces and one process. What are the three borders? There is the superior border, the inferior border and the right lateral border. Two surfaces, that is anterior and posterior surface. And one process which is called the uncinate process of the pancreas as you see right here. Now let's look at the relations of the head of the pancreas. The superior border is overlapped by the first part of the duodenum as you see right here. And it is related to the superior anterior pancreatico duodenal artery that you see right here. The inferior border is related to the third part of the duodenum and the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. Finally, the right lateral border is related to the second part of the duodenum, the terminal part of the bile duct and the anastomosis between the superior and inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. Moving on to the relations of the two surfaces, first let's look at the relations of the anterior surface of the head of the pancreas. The anterior surface is related from above downwards to the first part of the duodenum, the transverse colon and the jejunum. The posterior surface is related to the inferior vena cava, the terminal part of the renal veins, the right cross of the diaphragm and the bile duct. The uncinate process is related to the superior mesenteric vessels and posteriorly to the iota. To make it more clear, let's look at the relations of the anterior surface of the pancreas through this diagram. The anterior surface is related from above downwards to the first part of the duodenum, the transverse colon and the jejunum. The posterior surface is related to the inferior vena cava, the terminal part of the renal veins, the right cruise of the diaphragm and the bile duct. The uncinate process is related posteriorly to the iota and anteriorly to the superior mesenteric vessels. 
Now concising the important points under the head of the pancreas, the head is the enlarged flattened right end of the pancreas situated within the C-shaped curve of the duodenum. Looking at the external features, the head has three borders, superior, inferior and right lateral, two surfaces that is the anterior and posterior and one process that is the ancillary process. Looking at the relations of the three borders, the superior border is overlapped by the first part of the duodenum and is related to the superior pancreatico duodenal artery. The inferior border is related to the third part of the duodenum and inferior pancreatico duodenal artery. The right lateral border is related to the second part of the duodenum, the terminal part of the bile duct and anastomosis between the two pancreatico duodenal arteries. Moving on to the relations of the two surfaces, the anterior surface is related from above downwards to the first part of the duodenum, the transverse colon and the jejunum. The posterior surface is related to the inferior vena cava, the terminal part of the renal veins, the right crust of the diaphragm and the bile duct. Finally, the uncinate process is related anteriorly to the superior mesenteric vessels and posteriorly to the iota. Now moving on to the next part, we have the neck of the pancreas. It is a slightly constricted part of the pancreas between its head and the body. It is directed forwards, upwards and to the left. It has two surfaces that is the anterior and the posterior surface. Looking at the relations of the neck of the pancreas, the anterior surface is related to the peritoneum covering the posterior wall of the lesser sac and the pylorus. The posterior surface is related to the termination of the superior mesenteric vein right here and the beginning of the portal vein. Now let us concise the important points that we learn under the neck of the pancreas. It is slightly constricted part of the pancreas between its head and the body. It is directed forwards, upwards and to the left. It has two surfaces that is anterior and posterior. Looking at the relations, the anterior surface is related to the peritoneum covering the posterior wall of the lesser sac and the pylorus. The posterior surface is related to the termination of superior mesenteric vein and beginning of the portal vein. Now let us move on to the next part of the pancreas that is the body of the pancreas. It is elongated and it extends from the neck to the tail right here. Looking at the external features of the body of the pancreas, it is triangular on cross section and has three borders that is the anterior, superior and the inferior. A part of the body projects upwards beyond the rest of the superior border. This projection is called the tuber or mentale right here. Looking at the relations of the body of the pancreas, the anterior border provides attachment to the root of the transverse mesocolon that you see right here. The superior border is related to the tuber or mentale, while the inferior border is related to the superior mesenteric vessels right here. Now looking at the relations of the surfaces of the body of the pancreas, the anterior surface is concave directed forwards and upwards. It is related to the lesser sac and the stomach. Now looking at the relations of the posterior surface of the body of the pancreas in this diagram, it is devoid of peritoneum. It is related to the iota, the left cruise of the diaphragm, the left kidney and the left renal vessels. Concising the important points under the body of the pancreas, the body is elongated it extends from its neck to the tail. Looking at the external features, it is triangular on cross section and has three borders that is the anterior, superior and inferior. A part of the body projects upwards beyond the rest of the superior border and this projection is called the tuber omentale. Moving on to the relations, the three borders are related as follows. The anterior border provides a attachment to the root of the transverse mesocolon, the superior border is related to the tuber omentale and inferior border is related to the superior mesenteric vessels. Moving on to the relations of the three surfaces, we have the anterior surface, posterior surface and inferior surface. The anterior surface is concave directed forwards and upwards. It is related to the lesser sac and the stomach. The posterior surface is devoid of peritoneum. It is related to the iota, left cruise of the diaphragm, left kidney and left renal vessels. 
the inferior surface is covered by peritoneum and is related to the duodeno jejunal flexure in the left colic flexure. Now looking at the last part that is the tail of the pancreas, this is the left end of the pancreas. It lies in this gastrosplenic ligament that you see right here along with the splenic vessels. It comes in contact with the lower part of the gastric surface of the spleen right here. Finally, concising the important points under the tail of the pancreas, this is the left end of the pancreas. It lies in the lienorenal ligament together with the splenic vessels. It comes in contact with the lower part of the gastric surface of the spleen. Nextly, let us move on to the ducts of the pancreas. The exocrine pancreas is drained by two ducts, the main duct and the accessory duct. The main pancreatic duct that you see right here is 3 millimeters in diameter and lies near the posterior surface of the pancreas and it is recognized by its white color. It receives many small branches which join it at acute angles showing a V-shaped pattern called the herringbone pattern. Within the head of the pancreas right here, the pancreatic duct is related to the bile duct as you can see right here. Now these two ducts enter the second part of the duodenum and join to form the hepatopancreatic ampulla of Vater that opens at the major duodenal papilla right here. The accessory pancreatic duct that you see right here begins in the lower part of the head of the pancreas. It crosses the front of the main duct right here and opens into the duodenum at the minor duodenal papilla right here. Concising the important points under the ducts of the pancreas, the exocrine pancreas is drained by two ducts that is the main and the accessory pancreatic duct. The main pancreatic duct is 3 mm in diameter, lies near the posterior surface of the pancreas and is recognized by its white color. It receives very small tributaries which join it at acute angles showing a V-shaped pattern called the herringbone pattern. Within the head of the pancreas, the pancreatic duct is related to the bile duct. Two ducts enter the second part of the duodenum and join to form the hepatopancreatic ampulla of Vater. Secondly, there is the accessory pancreatic duct. It begins in the lower part of the head, crosses the front of the main duct and opens into the duodenum at the minor duodenal papilla. Now moving on to the arterial supply of the pancreas. The pancreas is supplied mainly by the pancreatic branches of the splenic artery that you see right here. The superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. So it is supplied by the pancreatic branches of the splenic artery, the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. Next, looking at the venous drainage of the pancreas, the veins drain into the splenic vein, the superior mesenteric vein and the portal veins. Concising the important points under the arterial supply, the pancreas is supplied mainly by the pancreatic branches of the splenic artery, the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. The venous drainage is that the veins drain into the splenic, superior mesenteric and portal veins. The lymphatic drainage is by the pancreaticosplenic, celiac and superior mesenteric lymph nodes and the nerve supply is by the vagus or parasympathetic nerves and the splanchnic sympathetic nerves. Finally, to end with, let us look at the functions and the clinical anatomy of the pancreas. The functions include digestive function that is the pancreatic juice contains many digestive enzymes, trypsin breaks down proteins into lower peptides, amylases hydrolyzes starch and glucose to disaccharides, lipase breaks down fat to fatty acids. Second function is endocrine function that is the carbohydrates are the immediate source of energy. Insulin helps in the utilization of sugar in the cells. Third is the pancreatic function that is it provides appropriate alkaline medium that is around pH of 8 for activity of pancreatic enzymes. Finally, let us look at the clinical anatomy of the pancreas. The deficiency of insulin causes diabetes mellitus. There is carcinoma of the head of the pancreas that can occur. Pancreatic cysts can occur and pancreatitis can also happen. I hope you found this video helpful. 
to get the notes of pancreas as well as other topics of anatomy, physiology, psychology, pathology, pharmacology and biomechanics, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.